Great. How are you guys doing? Good evening and welcome to what are you gonna start it? I was about to say good evening and welcome to Silk and Sugar episode four with myself, Michael Elijah today, and we're particularly enamored this week to have a very special guest in Mike El Cyclone Ayala. How's it going, Mike? Thank you, sir. Uh good, good. How about you guys? How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're doing really good here, Mike. This is really an honor to um, be able to sit here and talk with you. I'm looking forward to this. All of us are going to have a good time. Let's get in. Oh, the honor is mine. Thank you. If we start with current affairs, namely last night in Abu Dhabi, we saw Dimitri Bouval pitch uh, a virtual shutout over Gilberto Ramirez mm -hmm. at the uh, Etihad Arena last night. Now, I think Bouval... It is one serious fighting machine, but it's fair to say that the performance and the commitment from Ramirez was a little disappointing, would you not say, uh, Silk? Personally, I wasn't disappointed. I wouldn't expect anything more from him. I had not really anything on him prior to this fight. So looking at him, I was a little bit surprised that he was, he was as game as he was. Um, I think a lesser fighter probably would have folded under under um, the kind of attack that Bivo has because he is a very, you know, he's got many levels to him. And obviously he wasn't pushed out there last night, but he is a very good fighter, an exceptional fighter. And he'll be one to, you know, that's, that's someone to deal with in the future. That's a problem. Uh, Mike Ayala, I believe you were a little bit disappointed and were expecting a bit more from Zerdo. I was. I was very disappointed because, uh, you know, the hype, especially with the Hispanic era where I'm from, and, uh, you, know, the, you know, the talk was about the surdo and, and uh, you know, the hype and the fights and stuff. I was disappointed that he didn't, you know, when you fight for the title, you know, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a different, it's a different, uh, and you know what I'm talking about, Mike, when you fight for the championship yeah. of the world, yeah. it's, a, it's a big deal. Yeah. And especially uh, then sometimes, you know, like, I'll be honest with you, you know, when the Juan kid mess up, and I'm not ashamed to say, I, you know, I laid an egg, I froze. You know, with Little Red Lopez, you know what I mean? I fought a great fight, then I fight for the title again. And, uh, you know, like I said, I laid an egg, you know what I mean? It, it, yeah. it happened. Yeah. The pressure. So I can understand if uh, a Surdo didn't, didn't fight, because fighting for the title, especially a great fighter like Bible, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, in other words, it's easier said than done. You know, you're absolutely right, Mike, um, in, in that aspect of it. I didn't know much about this kid going in. I think you know a little bit more, but I would say that when it's when you're fighting for the title, you're fighting for all the marbles, and you need to be able to let everything go. You want to leave. You want to like. You want to go out on your shield. I understand that grab without a doubt. But the pressure. But the pressure you're under. You know what I mean, yeah, Michael? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of pressure. It looked to me like Ramirez wasn't really uh, prepared to go to that place, to that dark place that he might have had to go if he was seriously um, invested in winning and, he, and if he seriously had self-belief. To be it honest, some man, very, very few fighters are. Very few fighters are because it, it's um, so much of it is about momentum. Like If you feel confident going into the fight, then you can maintain that confidence going through. But if, if, you're, if you go into that fight and you're – in your realistic mind, you're not sure you're going to get that. That's a question, exactly. Yeah, but then it's then it's a difficult thing. And especially then you get to you know the environment, the time change, you know the time change, the different you know the different the different types of food, yeah. you know it, it, it's 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 a, it's, uh, well, it's, it's not something hard to adapt. Right? It's not hard field home field advantage. Like, look at Mayweather, for instance. He'll never fight outside of Vegas. Well, he didn't when he was really competing. Yeah, yeah. And that is home field advantage because you don't have to adjust to any time. You don't have to adjust to the any of the uh, discomforts of not being at home. None of that. Everything is just 100% the way you want it, so you're perfectly fine going in. And 80% and Mexican, you know what I mean? They're, they're <laughs> singing the national, you know what I mean? The Mexican flag is flying all over the place, especially in Vegas. So yeah. you, then you have the home field advantage, but this time, you know, it was everything was neutralized. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, the interesting thing was that uh, Zerdo looked huge in the ring. He looked like a, a like an old school nineteen seventies heavyweight in terms yeah. of his physical stamp. Yeah. He and sure yet, did. He did, didn't he? And yet, it was uh, Bivol who looked. When Bivol felt like sticking it on him and being physical and asserting yeah. himself, yeah. he he had zero respect for the for the size and strength. Of Ramirez, as it turned out, you know, 
and was able to push him around when he felt like it with the extra, extra speed. Mikey, yeah, Mikey, as you well know, when you're uh, and and you know as well, Ben, when you have skills and you're confident in your skills, there's nothing anyone can like. Remember that quote Mike Tyson said, something about bring me your primitive weapons or something like that. That's really what it's like when you're when you when you have skills over an individual and you well, know it. When it, when Mike Tyson said, "How dare they challenge me with their primitive skills?" Exactly. Yes. The Sphinx fight. Yeah. And that's what it's really all about. When a fighter is confident, when they look at another fighter and they know they don't have the skills to step in the ring with them, it's it's a wash. It's not even an issue. It it really it's a mindset. If you go into the mindset with with the, you know, they're gonna have to take me out dead. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh. That's you know a do or die uh, uh, aspect. That's hard to beat. When yeah. you go in and you, when you go in and you said you know what, he's gonna have to to annihilate me because I you know I want taking the title, and that's hard to beat. When you got that, that frame of mind and you psyched out, but like like Michael was saying, but if you go with only instead of a hundred percent, just like seventy five percent, that's not gonna cut it. Sure, yeah. and and you know afterwards there was a quote I saw on uh, Twitter today from Ramirez where he said that you know I did what I had to do I worked the body I thought I did enough but the judges did what they had to do they they, they do their job I did mine and it seemed the you know the essence of that seemed to be that he was in denial you know because he if he won two rounds of that fight it, one was being generous to him yeah yeah I, I hey, thought, well, go ahead go ahead go ahead no, Michael Mikey, Mikey, you first please uh, a lot of times a lot of fighters they lie to themselves you know what I mean it's good, you know, you, you, uh, you have to admit with someone you don't, you know, like the Juan K. Mesa fight. I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to sit there and lie while I was ahead, but I didn't have it in that fight. But that's for some reason I choked. And that's one of the hardest things for a fighter to admit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you have to, you know, because I believe in a saying, you can lie to everybody else, but you can't lie to yourself. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. And, you know, maybe uh, on reflection, uh, Ramirez will come to realise that he did lose the fight by a street. Um, the, the upshot of this is that we knew that Bivol wasn't a flesh in the pan from his previous career. But because he really came to more kind of mainstream boxing attention by the win over Canelo, there was a, there was an essence, uh, there, was, there was a sense of pressure last night that he had to consolidate that victory and prove that he wasn't a flesh in the pan or a one-hit wonder, as it were. I think Bivol has proved that he was every bit as good as people suspected he was. Yeah. They didn't already know it. Yeah. And all the talk now in the light heavyweight division is of a showdown with Arta uh, Betabiev. Um, yeah. How do you call that one, Michael? That is a, a hard fight to call. I, You know, I, I noticed certain things about Bivol last night, and, and I thought that there was, there was little sort of like chinks in the armor that somebody like Viterbiev could take advantage of. Um, I haven't looked in the I haven't looked at it in the way of Bivol being able to take advantage of Viterbiev yet. So I need to take a look at I need to look at it both evenly and then give my kind of like analysis of what what I think would happen. But that's a great fight. I I think that is the best fight in boxing today. You prefer that fight than than Tank Davis versus Oh, absolutely. Either absolutely you know um ryan yeah. garcia or yeah uh, yeah i mean i think that's because those two boys look like like super kids you know what i mean they're just yeah. they're just amazing what about animals. spence crawford you prefer it to spence crawford you think it's even better fight than that yeah i do i am really I, I i strongly go for crawford in that one i really don't see I, I mean obviously spence is incredibly talented but i just think the physicality of crawford is just going to be too much in that fight for spence given what he's gone through in the last few years I don't know if he's really come back 100% to be able to handle that. Do you have any thoughts, I, Mike, on um, Bivol versus Beterbiev? Uh Well, I haven't, I haven't seen, uh, uh, I'll pronounce his name correctly, Beterbiev. I haven't seen him fight, but they say he's a good fighter. But I can tell you, Spence and Crawford, that's a good fight. Yeah. And uh, and then, you know, uh, the, the big fight with uh, Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia. I'm a big Ryan Garcia fan. And... Uh, you know, I know he hasn't been tested, but he's been dropped. And when he fought Campbell, uh, Luke Campbell, and uh, I like what I see, and I think he has uh, the package to handle it. But now, Tank Davis can hit. You saw what he did to Raleigh Romero. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? That was, you know what I mean? Him coming in perfect. You know, Raleigh Romero was super confident. Yeah. And maybe that could have been Raleigh Romero's downfall. The confidence, the confidence factor can, you know, I think it hurt him. But... Yeah, um, the... the um... 
the update with that particular situation is that Oscar De La Hoya said they've done everything from their end. Both both teams have agreed the deal. They said now the only thing to be resolved is the networks to decide what they're going to do, you know, and to resolve their differences. But De La Hoya said as far as on the managerial side, that uh, Davis versus Garcia is made and it's a done deal. Um, do Mike fancies Garcia as the bigger man? I, I I lean towards Tank to be honest with you, Silk. I don't know how you'd see it. Yeah, I I tend to I tend to lean towards Tank myself as well. I mean, Ryan Garcia's got all the attributes you'd want. I mean, he's got heart, he's got speed, he's got all those things. I, I just look at Tank as like he just does these things that are that are just so confirming of his professionalism like the way yeah. he slips and counters the way he can and well, he's a great fighter he's yeah. a great fighter Isn't thank great... david you know i just the only reason why i like uh ryan garcia is the height and uh, you know he's tall and he's game yeah. now yes, when you get hit that's the question you know what i mean yeah. a lot of times thank david has been in the big fights mm -hmm. uh ryan garcia has been you know not a big fight. You know, he has to fight the competition. Tank, da Tank Davis has fought. So this is going to be a big test. Yeah. So, you know, that's when it comes out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just the ability, Mike, to, um, to be able to get to a fighter. It's almost like this kid, uh, Tank, has done the homework. You know what I mean? Like he, he understands what he has to do to get to, to, cut, to cut the advantages of Garcia down. Like the reach, for instance, and 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 Garcia is absolutely a fast fighter, and maybe even quicker quicker reflexes than Tank himself. But at what point is like speed isn't going to do it for you? At, at this point, it's going to have to be timing, and timing and speed are not one and the same. You know what I mean? As a timing, fan, so so the fact that he's able to slip the punch and counter like the way he does is just so it, it's such a like once you throw the punch, you're open, and for that split second you're open and tank davis is able to take advantage of that and that's where i see i'm not i'm not sure like uh garcia overwhelms his opponents with his with his ability you know what i mean I right don't know no. that, i don't know that uh he's going to be able to over overwhelm tank with that ability it's not the same thing it's exactly what I, what I think this is my opinion tank davis what you're saying everything about tank davis is true but the factor, the factor that Ryan Garcia has is the reach factor. If he can, you know, uh, uh, agitate and aggravate uh, a tank, because tank is small, one of the disadvantages, uh, one thing I learned, and it's not always true, a good big fighter will always beat a good little fighter. But, but we know it's not always true. We know it's not always true, Mike, because we spoke yeah, about true. I understand that. Yes. Yes. No, you're right. You're correct. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not but I'm saying, but more than 50%, it is true. Sometimes, you know, I mean, if, if, I'm not saying, but if, if Garcia is smart, keeps his distance, because Tank Davis is what, 5'1", 5'2", uh, or not 5'4". No, no, I, I'm not being funny. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> come on, Michael. Uh, <laughs> no, no, but, but, but he's not tall. Enough. I think five. I, I'm not sure, but five four, five five. I, I, yeah, I'm just he's guessing. About five four, maybe five four sounds right to yeah, me. Yeah, well, he's my height, five four, and I, everybody I fought was big. You yeah. know what I mean? I fought yeah. all my career. Everybody was taller than me. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So I, I know the disadvantages. So, Mikey, look at your fight with De with um with uh, Little Red, for instance, right? Like he had a huge height and reach advantage against you. And what and what did you do? You you backed up. You fought him off the ropes, pretty much. You know, which is also unheard of. You fought him out of the corner. You fought him with your back to the ropes. All those things are kind of like not what a boxing trainer would teach you to do to fight somebody. Right? Like, you get off the road. But you're able to take that and use that to your advantage. Why? Because of your like, you're incredible. Like you have because he was coming to me, and the thing is that I know how to use the ropes, and I and it was helping me because at that time it was 15 rounds. Exactly. The fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and to be honest, and not to make any excuses because I don't want to do that yeah. and take away from Rio Lopez is a great champion. Yes. But I felt I had overtrained for that fight. Mm -hmm. I was you know I was running you know and that time I didn't really know how you know I mean like uh, you you train hard you peak yeah. and then you taper down you know what yeah. I mean yeah, yeah. and what happened is and I was 
And I was terrified. I thought I had overdone. I was running 15 miles a day without what? rest. Now, you must. It, Why? Yeah, yeah. That was, I was running a lot of miles. I was running from <laughs> 8 to 9 to 10 miles in wow. the morning. You know what I mean? I was running too much. And, and then by the time I got to fight, I had to pull my groin. Yeah. And, but then again, I'm not making no excuses. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, that's the way it is. You but you learn. Me. Yeah, but you learn exactly. Well, let me ask you about that then, because you know, in those days of fifteen round fights, I fought one of the last ones. But you were like the king of that stuff. You were right in the mix of it, and it was it was expected. How much training would you do going into a fight? Looking looking at what they do today, for instance, you did. You know, would you always do fifteen miles of road work, and would you supplement that also with training in the gym, like actual boxing and sparring that same day? How many rounds sparring would you do going into a fifteen round fight? Well, you know, that time, you know, I mean. And, and also too, I had I had fought with a broken nose because I was fighting with Walter Waits and then you know the guys to, to for the height, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I fought with guys. That I was only a featherweight, and really I wasn't really a featherweight. When I went into a fight, I was weighing 122, 123 pounds. You know, yeah. that was super bad weight. But at that time, they were you know uh, uh, I was fighting way over my weight, so. My errors. I hear exactly what you're saying, and that was another question I had for you, and I don't want to segue off into something, but I have to ask you, how many fights did you go into injured with an injury? Because this is something that happens with boxers, I feel, consistently. But oh, with yeah. Athletes, with other athletes, if they get hurt, someone else is going to take the, take a place for them or something. But yeah. with boxers, it's never that way. How many fights have you gone? Can you remember the big fights that you Oh, yeah. Uh, like one time, I think when I fought uh, from Fito Gomez, I had an injured, an injured right hand, yes. and you know what I mean. And uh, I, uh, uh, my father injected me with Novocaine, and and my knuckles. You know, yes. I had a doctor. You know, me because my hand, my right hand, was, I, yeah. I think I had broken. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. I was a kid. I was in high school, and I got, I got jumping because he said I was dating his girlfriend or whatever. And <laughs> and uh, you know, the I dumped, You know, you, I was what seventeen at the time. Yeah. And I fought for my teacher Gomez, so I was a, I was a dumb kid. Yeah. And uh, anyway, to make the long story short, then, you know, like a fighter, you know, and then the promoters, you know, they can't postpone the fight because of the ticket sales. And then, and then you have to fight. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. you're right. I couldn't pull out because I had a, a busted hand. And when I, when I fought Little Red Lopez, I, uh, I uh, you know, uh, I had broken my nose. So mm -hmm. the fight, you know, you know what I mean? So. If you look at the fight, my nose is twice the size that it is now. You know what I mean? And uh, and uh, so, and but the fight has well, to go on. The first knockdown, you can clearly see that Mike is in pain from the nose. It's not the power of the punch itself or the flurry. It literally is because his nose is is in agony, and and it's finally registered through the adrenaline. I think. Yeah. yeah. Right. And what happened was that he hit me, and then my eyes watered. You know what I mean? And I, and I knew he was coming in, and so I went down on one knee not to get hit. Because I, I've learned through boxing, and Michael knows what I'm talking about, and so do you, Ben. The fight that puts you, the punch that puts you down, is the punch you don't see. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. you know, you, you know what I mean. Because you don't see the shot when you, when you realize you're getting up. Oh man, I got dropped. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I got dropped, and you're getting this stuff up. Like when I fought at the forum against uh, uh, Solis's brother, I yes. got dropped in, the, oh, in yeah. that first round. Uh, 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 I got dropped in the first round, and I went, "Man, here we go again." I got dropped, and but the, the, the your, your mind is talking to you. Yes, you know what I mean. You get up and right, right away, you know what I mean. You go into into uh, not panic mode, but you go into you know off hands on deck. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So, Mike, so uh, I'm sorry, Ben. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say that the thing that's interesting when he talks about getting decked by Solis at the Felt Forum. That was actually the same tragic night that Willie Klassen died, or you know, right. did that night and died a couple of days yeah, later. Yeah. And Mike said to me, um, the the strange thing about going in there, it was his first fight under Victor Vale as well, because he'd just broken with his dad, the, right. literally the previous fight. And he yes. said the strange thing was he felt like the angel of death was in that ring. Oh, it was. was it was weird. To him. Right. It was strange. It was strange because you know, I'm going in, I'm going with all new people, Dennis Rappaport, Victor Vaya, Victor Vaya's son. I'm going in, so it's strange for me. Yeah. But as I'm going into the crowd at the forum, man, it was like, it was cold. It was, you know, it felt weird. You know what I mean? I get into the ring, and it wasn't the same. It, you know what I mean? And, you know, and, and I really believe that the, the, the angel of death was there.
it was really you know because Cyprian was on the undercard. Yeah, but for Cyprian, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so let me ask you, uh, Mike, how much did your pedigree, your amateur pedigree, help when you were fighting as a pro? Oh, it helped a lot. Yeah, it helped a lot. You know what I mean? Because uh, as an amateur, I fought a lot like a pro. I so I fought with Tony Moreno. I fought with all the pro, all professional fighters. That's how. That's my pedigree. I grew up with all the professional fighters. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, the, that's what helped me. Also, you also fought Tommy Herms, Hearns as an amateur? And he beat him. Yeah, fought, unlike some people. I can make <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Nah, don't say yeah. that. Nah, nah. I fought Tommy Hearns in Knoxville, Tennessee in 1974. Wow. Yeah, in the quarterfinals in Knoxville, Tennessee. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. And he was what? He must have been like a bantamweight then? Or? Bantamweight, yeah. Yeah, he was a bantamweight, 119. But he was too tall and skinny, and my name too would have him. Yeah, yeah, the same height as he was when I fought him, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was tall. He yeah. just said he, he, did, he, he hadn't blossomed out yet. He was real thin. But he could hit. He could <laughs> hit, and he, fought, and he fought the same way. You know what I mean? He never changed his style. Tall, you know, that's yeah. the way my name too had him. You know who else he beat in the amateurs, Michael? He beat no. Bernard Taylor, too. No way. Wow. It's special, too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Beat Derek Holmes, Bernard Charles Taylor. Holmes. And wow. Derek Yeah. Holmes. And Charles Mooney. I should have been, you know, I mean, I should have gone to the Olympics, but. This is a That's killer. A in and, why, and why didn't you um, go, to, like, were you, was there a box off? And, you know what I mean? Because I heard about the box offs. If you no. Were, you get to what that. happened, I was having issues, you know, uh, personal issues, you know, with my dad and stuff. And uh, what was happening is, you know, uh, you know, I know I would have made the Olympic team. Um, and, uh, you know, it just that all of a sudden, they offered me, my father came to me and said, if I wanted to turn pro and, and uh, in the heat of the moment, you know what I mean? It was a bad decision. I decided to, you know, I turned pro. And, but you, I, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to ask you. I'm sorry. I'm jumping on yours. I have so many. No, things no. To ask you. But did your, was your dad accepting of the fact, like when you go on the international team, right? You go into, you train with other trainers and you're yeah. longer train with your father. Was he uh, possessive, of, possessive of you like that? No, not at all. You know, I mean, he wanted me to learn when I went, like when I went to the Soviet Union, and uh, would he tell me just just to remember where I come from? You know, what I mean, and uh, you know, to the, the same, the same, the way I trained. He wanted me to travel. He wanted me, to, you know, when I went to Russia. When I went to Russia, I was only sixteen years old. Yeah, you had to be seventeen. Yes. When I went, and I went with Leonard Pryor, yeah. uh, 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 Bonzel Johnson. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. uh, Danny Amartya from Denver, Colorado. You know, yeah. I won't really let you know. I was just a kid. Yeah. He definitely boxed on some of the same cards as Marvin Hagler, too, back in the day. Right. Yeah. Which is quite a lineage. You know, quite a, quite a, quite a, quite a rearing in the game. I, I was I, lucky. I was lucky. I know you guys are doing a book, and it's going to be a great book. I can't wait to get my hands on it. But I have to ask you, as a sibling, did you always get along with your brothers? Yes and no. We got along, but the rivalry was, you know, the way we were, you know, we got along, yes, but then sometimes there was, we had some issues. But the bad thing about it is that we knew how to fight. And I remember one incident where I got into a, into a skirmish with Sammy, and, uh, you know, I mean, we got, and, and I hit Sammy. We got into a battle, and I hit Sammy, and I cut his lip, and Ooh. Sammy was going to fight. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. He got he had a bag. So my father comes in, my dad comes in and finds out, and and it was the time of of, of Christmas. You know what I mean? Yeah. And boy, did he he chewed me out, got on my ass, and <laughs> and uh, excuse the term, I'm sorry, and told me to uh, you know I I I I was grounded. I, you know what I mean? It was just yeah. You know, and uh, but but that's the way it was. You know what I mean? When yeah. Because the brothers knew we knew how to fight, so we knew. Yeah. At any given time, you know, yeah, once you we get the best of others. Who's, 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 the king, who's the king of the Ayala jungle then between you, the four, four or five? Well, I was the oldest, but, you know, Sammy and, and Tony, they held their own. Believe <laughs> me, they did. So th th was there one time Was there one time that you were surprised? Like all of a sudden you were like, I got to give these guys some respect because. Oh, especially Tony. Tony started growing up. You know, I, I stayed small, small. I took after my mom. Yeah. I'm only five feet four. 
<laughs> I think it's taller than Donate Davis. I'm just joking. But uh <laughs> but uh, uh I'm five four and uh and Tony grew up to five seven, you know, Tony and when Tony yeah. started stretching out, you know what I mean? I couldn't mess with him anymore. He was getting yeah, too yeah. big. Yeah. And uh, then Sammy, Sammy's about five seven, five eight. So Sammy and Tony and Polly are the tallest. Yes. I uh, got it. I'm sorry, Ben. I know you have some. Well, you know what? I, I, I think it's cool. We're just going off in whatever direction we fancy going in. As I say, just so Mike knows, he doesn't think he'll still be here next Tuesday. We we, we, we always cut this within an hour. We go about 50 minutes usually, something like that. So we've gone 25 already. Um, If we want to talk about something current and then see where we, see where we kind of uh, veer off to, off the back of it, one of the fights on the card last night was um, the, the female fight, Chantel Cameron versus Jess, Jessica McGaskill. I don't know if you caught it, but McGaskill mm-hmm. looked horribly unskilled and, and yeah. lacking finesse. I've seen it before and mm-hmm. I wasn't overly impressed, but that really looked like super white collar sub novice stuff. Mm-hmm. And it just seems like um, it's a shame for some people, some of the diehards who are still not down with this um, unisex kind of uh, culture that we now, you know, inhabit mm-hmm. the boxing. It's a shame when you see some of the recent examples that raised the bar for, for the female game. That was pretty uh, threadbare skills-wise. Did you see it, Michael? I personally didn't see it. I was about to, and then I, I um, unfortunately, I had to go out for dinner. That's very unfortunate. You, Some guys have all the bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> right? Did yeah. you see it, Mike? You, you know, I, no, I, I, I didn't see it. Was it a female fight? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 yeah it was... Um, for the, I uh, believe, the like, welterweight championship of the world, and I think it was undisputed, but the girl, Ms. Gaskill, who, who lost, was coming down from welterweight, where she is actually the undisputed welterweight champion of the world. And um, But she just looked absolutely super terrible. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like I've seen, you know, g- girls with a couple of amateur fights with, with better skills and better fundamentals. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's, clearly, she's strong, you know. She, she's mm-hmm. obviously a handful, and she and, and she can punch. But but she just looked super <laughs> terrible, you know. Um that I was just interested to see if either one of you had seen it. I know you speak about it, Michael. You, you, you're you supportive of the idea. You're not against the idea. But you'd say that they have a long way to go till they reach that median level, which has long since been established in yeah in the bigger world of boxing, should we say? I, I think, I think, I mean, I, I think even just the, the male men's boxing itself still need, has a long way to go before it hits its, like, the higher average. Former peak. Form yes. Of- yeah. So, so boxing in general, but but the female boxing, absolutely, without a doubt. I don't think the I don't think the coaches, I don't think the coaching has the same, with the exception of a couple of people like Buddy McGirt and a few other boxing trainers out there. None of them really treat their fighters like they're boxers and not, and not female boxers. They they the level of expectations are extremely low. And 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 the things that they see as being a positive attribute are not positive. Att- being able to take a bunch of punches and not teaching a person defense because they can take a bunch of punches uh, isn't. Uh, I don't. I don't think that should be acknowledged. I don't think that's. I don't think that's a skill. I think that's. Just- I, if my opinion is the female boxing is still to me, is my opinion still kind of amateurish because they're not. See, men, for some reason, females cannot go, I guess, the rounds of, like a championship, like they fight only eight rounds. Am I correct on a championship fight? No, they fight 10-2s, Mike. They fight yeah, 10 they fight, yeah. rounds. But there's they a fight big two argument. rounds, right? A, there's a big argument that they should box three-minute rounds. And I think a lot of the ladies are down with that idea and would like to do that as well. It should be. It should be. It never cuts it down. It should be. Boxing should be universal. 10, 12, 15 minutes, you know, uh, 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 three minute rounds, the same as everybody else. You know what I mean? I think. And that's, and the, I know the women are coming up, but it's still not the same as, as male boxing. You know what I mean? The skill much. set. The skill yeah. set. Interestingly, your dad spawned four talented young men who all, well, certainly three of you, well, no, two of you became, got, got to world class level. But you all had perhaps world class potential and could have perhaps you know the sky was the limit, and yet his first world champion after all that tooling away. Oh, Maribel, Maribel, yeah. Maribel, oh yeah. yeah, exactly. And I and I saw her fight. But what I'm saying is, 
and he had to go to South Korea and they're like, yeah, exactly. My event was, was exceptional. You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. But the skill, but the skill set, you know what I mean? The skill set and a lot of girls that seem like, okay, let's take an example. Okay. And I, you know, I don't, Mighty Bell was accepted. Yes. But I never thought very much of Christy Martin. No. Bro, of and the skill set, I'm talking about left hooks, counter punching. You know, I'm talking, uh, uh, uh you know what I mean? Sidestepping, you know, yeah, cutting yeah, the yeah. ring, you know, yeah. and that type of knowledge. Usually the women are, they go in and right away, it's, you know, oh, they, 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 it's a not allowed war. They don't, you know, block and no defense, yeah. you know, no, no faint. They don't set no traps. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And that, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not really talking. I know that, you know, a female, you know, can go and knock you out at, at the right time with the right shot. But send traps and stuff, I don't think they're there yet. I haven't seen anybody, uh, not unless I, <coughs> like, uh, Look at Muhammad Ali's daughter. Uh, daughter. Uh, yeah. But with Layla, I think it was the celebrity gravitas, wasn't it? You know what I mean? And I think the same thing with Christy Martin had that kind of story behind her, that kind of old blue-collar American girl. The coal like, miner's like, daughter, yes. She was the coal <laughs> miner's daughter, remember? There, yeah. There is an interesting documentary about Christy, actually, in her pretty crazy life where she had this strange relationship with her former manager who tried to kill her and all oh, the rest. Oh, yeah, that was nuts. Yeah, that was it's weird. Worth, that was the weird thing I heard about that. It's it's worth watching, you know. But um, we, we don't have to get... I, I don't want to talk about women's boxing endlessly. And the reason why is one of the one of the diehards who always watches anything we do is a friend of mine called John Doyle. And he really... He, he is so uh, traditional. He's such a traditional kind of 1970s man that he lo he loves to hear about women's boxing. And he thinks he's a massive, massive Ayala fan. He loves the whole Ayala legacy and story. And Tony Jr. is one of his favourite fighters. And I think he'd see the talking heads on these screens thinking, and they're talking about fucking women's boxing, for God's sake. No, no I'm not. I'm, I'm, about to, I'm about to shift gears on you for right here. No, let's My, do it. Mikey, I want to ask you, um, if you could do it all over again, what would you not do? If you could do it, your, your career, everything that, how your career moved into your personal life, what would, let me just make it easier. What would you do different, I guess, in your, in your life that would bring you the success you, not just from winning a world title and doing what you did, you accomplished so much, but what did you really feel you reached your potential? You fulfilled all your potential. I would learn to say no, say no. Wow. Can you, you know what I mean? That? Yeah. Say no. In Say which... no. Uh-huh. And to and who in particular? Go ahead. And, and to who in particular would you say no to? Or what? To, you know, no to like with some, 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 sometimes, and you know what I'm talking about, they come to slip you something, they give you something, mm -hmm. uh, drugs or, 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 or bad advice. You know what I mean, yes, and yes, follow yes. and follow what you and follow who you are. You know what I mean. And sometimes yeah. you could be you could be your father, it could be anybody. Yeah. But you have to follow your, you know, what I mean, your your instincts. Yes. I mean, and that's what fighting's all about. That's what we do in the ring, right? You get into a exactly, fight and and it's all your instincts that come out. You're trained, but you're still your instincts that they define who you are as a fighter. And that's what I love. Exactly. I mean, sometimes you can get some people come in and they get with, they get in your ingredients, they mix up your ingredients, and you don't come out the way you really yeah. are. Do you know, Paul Mernaji said that about Buddy McGurk. He said he kept trying to, he said he took away his movement because he said, oh, yeah, he wanted him to have a wider stance. Yeah. And he said, he had this, he had this kind of sound, but he said, you got to get low to stay in the show. And he yeah, was yeah. That made me more sedentary and slower yeah. and everything else. Yeah. And I think some trainers don't understand necessarily yeah. what the fighters best attributes are uh, you yeah. know and they don't have that chemistry yeah. but you know michael you must have come across this and i imagine you have too mike some trainers their whole kind of mystique is based on making the fighter think that they're a genius and making them think they're actually doing everything wrong and they need this guy if they're going to be successful and they're going to be able to realize their potential when actually the trainer is sometimes giving them the wrong advice about how they should be campaigning and how yeah. they should be boxed in you know what well, I mean? It's like, it's like when you're trying to make every fighter fight a certain style. It's not yeah. going to work. You can't make, you can't make, uh, I don't know, Mike Tyson fight like Muhammad Ali. Or vice you, can. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's just not going to work. Well, and this is exactly. Because people said, 
Customato was a great uh, mentor and, and, and teacher, but they said if he couldn't get along with that peekaboo thing and, you know, that kind of slipping from the waist of yeah, a body. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said yeah. then they had to go somewhere else. They couldn't work out of that gym uh, yeah. in Canfield because they – they couldn't take root there and they couldn't develop there. And so if they, if they, if that didn't suit them, they had to go and find somebody else because that was what Cus taught, you know, and that was all he taught. Yeah. And, and, and slightly different to, I mean, probably considerably different to what Emmanuel Stewart was able to do. He was able to help many fighters that came into his camp and he finds their strengths and their attributes and their weaknesses. And, and you complement those. You don't necessarily try to change. An exactly. You, you enhance, you enhance his style. You enhance a fighter's character. That's yes. why I work with my fighters. I work with little kids and stuff, and I see, yeah. you know what I mean? Teach them, yeah. kind of, teach them defense. Because the name of the game, and you know, Michael, uh, they let you get, uh, the name of the game is to hit and not to get hit. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, because, you know, because uh, it doesn't matter how long you fight a fight. A shot, a punch will take a little bit out, out of you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, so you, you have to learn defense, and you adapt the fight. Because one thing I learned you never want the fighter, because the fighter can never be you. You know what I mean? Yes. You, you know what I mean? So you train the fighter to his attributes and not to yours as a trainer. Yeah. You know, interestingly, you mentioned Manny Stewart, Michael. When uh, Tony Jr. got arrested and went away for a very long time, the, and, and Mike had a, a difficult relationship with his father, and they were, sometimes they were in contact and sometimes they were not. When... Uh, the, the father, Tony Senior, was wondering what, what he would do with the rest of his training career after what happened with Tony. It was Manny Stewart who, who held out a kind of... Um, exactly, uh, threw him a bone. Threw him a bone. He, he threw him a bone, as Mike says. And he said, why don't we set up something called Cronk West out in Phoenix, Arizona, and I yeah. want you to be the head trainer, Tony. So that was yeah. Manny Stewart. They, they were they were tight since the amateur days. Yeah, the yeah. On the circuit. Yes. And it was Manny Stewart who gave Mike's father an opportunity to reinvent himself after yeah. he went away. Yeah, and he got Jesse Benavides, world champion. Yes. Jesse Benavides, uh, uh, Gabby Canisales. Yeah. And Manny Stewart signed them, and he had my father train them. My wow. father knew them as the amateurs. Yeah. So, you know, I might sort of help my dad a lot. Wow. For sure. Yeah. Mikey, and that's a friend. And that's a friend. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. I'd heard, I'd read where they were tight. Um, yeah. Did anyone ever warn you of pugilistic dementia growing up? Like, oh, yes. With your amateur career, did, did you see it and you saw it on certain fighters? Or did you yourself, uh, was, did somebody tell you, listen, you should fight like this because this the potential of this happening down the road is real. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? The risk you see, uh, I would, you know, my lifetime, you know, training, you see some fighters that were, at one time, were, were, were uh, you know, they were uh, local local warriors and then they boxed and then, you know, they didn't work out for them. There was a guy in school, but I used to go to, to Memorial High School. They used to call him the boxer. He walked, he would walk, he was an elderly old man. Yeah. And he would walk with his right hand under his chin. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, and they call him the boxer. You know what I mean? And, yeah, yeah. But, and then, you you know, you throw him a quarter or a dime and he would start shadow boxing. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, and he was like, you know, in his 60s, you know, he was yeah. already yeah. old. Yeah. But, you know what I mean? But, you know, he was punch drunk. Yes. You know what I mean? And, yeah. uh, and you always live with that fear. You know what I mean? Without yeah. ending up with nothing, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. We, we and have, uh, sorry, go ahead. Keep going. Go. Go ahead. I love. Yeah, you. and you and 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 the, I've always been afraid of that. Yeah. And the thing is, that's why when I decided to retire and go to school. Yeah. And really, and, and the and the hardest thing I think for a fighter is realizing that it's over. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what I told my brother Tony. You know, when it's over, you gotta you gotta come. To realize it's over, it's not the same when nobody's going to be patting you in the back. Mm -hmm. And then that praise will turn into ridicule. Yeah. They'll laugh at you. Yes, you know yes. what I mean? The guy, look, I make more money than you. And you know what I mean? Look, you were in the big time. So these are things, these are tools that you need. A fighter needs to say, hey, because if you respond and hurt them, you go to jail and they say, well, you, you're like a mad dog, like a pit bull. You need, you know, to, you need to put them down. You know something? James, um, sorry, John Tate once knocked a guy out. Yeah, he knocked a guy out on the street. 
because he said, I'm going to do to you, the guy, just, just some have a go hero on the street, said, I'm going to do to you what Mike Weaver did, did to you, yeah? That's a true story, and, yes. And, and, so anyway, so he knocked the guy out. And so he was, he, was in, he was in the dock, you know, in court for assault. And the judge was trying to establish, like they always do, whether you felt genuinely threatened by this person and whether you acted yeah. in self-defense. Sure. And he said, did you honestly think this man was going to knock you out? And John Tate said, no, but I didn't think Mike Weaver was going to knock me out either. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's a great story. Uh, isn't it? It's incredible how people don't understand, like when you're dealing with someone that's a professional in anything, you're talking about somebody that's exceptional, like this is this, this part of your life, all your life. You know what I mean? That you, you know, like put your pants on, you yeah. box. You know what I mean? Like put your pants, put your shoes on. You know, you're like, yeah. a, and and you know, so we understand. We have like it's like it's like you have a superpower. It really is. You're not going to be bothered by somebody on the street that's going to come up and talk to you about some some smack that you know what I mean? Because you know what happens if you. Just all you have to do is clip him with something and it's a lights out affair. It's not like, oh, yeah, to... because you know how to hit, you know where to hit, you know, yeah. right in the chin. It and the fight's yeah. over, or you, or you bust him up, you cut his eye, or yeah. you, you work the body, you know, uh, you know what to do. Yeah. yeah. And the guy in the street. You, I find it hard to imagine you in a physical altercation on the street, Silk. I can imagine Mike Ayala in one, definitely. Any of the Ayala's I can imagine. <laughs> street oh, fights. come on. <laughs> <laughs> and I can imagine, and yeah. I've had street fights myself, but I find it really hard yeah. to pick yeah. no, up. No, I, I'm, like, I'm, oh, I'm, yeah? definitely, I'm definitely not a street fighter, but I know one thing for sure that I, I know that that if I'm able to drop a professional boxer. Oh, yeah. I know that you do. You know what I mean? Like it, I yeah, just like, see you as more cerebral and just that kind of. It, uh, you you don't come across as a very aggressive person whatsoever. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not. Or I'm, even I'm, I am the last. I'm the last person to pull the trigger. That's for sure. Yeah, I can imagine. I'm no doubt. Like I say, I I don't doubt that you you could kill a man with a with you know with a left hook. But um, but it just <laughs> it's not something I automatically associate with you. The idea of I imagine you have a way of walking through the world, charming all and sundry to the point where people don't want to pick fights with you. That's my feeling. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you. Can we do something? Can we do like a quick like um. Uh, a word association. If I give you a word, Mike, that you yep. uh, that you come back with a feeling, with a feeling. Yeah, yep. like if I if I say a name to you, then what feelings do you associate with that name? I don't know. Go ahead, try it. Okay, let's try it. Okay, so uh, Johnny Tapia. What's the first thing that comes to your head? Tragic. Tragic. And why do you say that? Because. I knew Johnny Tapa, I heard of his problem, and the thing is that I think tragic because I had a brother like that, and sometimes you can't deal, you know, they can show you the problem, Yeah. this is what's happening, this is what's destroying you, and sometimes you think, well, the easiest thing for people to say is, oh, just don't do it, it's not that easy, no. No. and that's been part of your life for a long time, and you know, you come from that culture, it's not easy just to let it go. And then if it's everywhere where you go and people associate, you know what I mean? It takes, I've been clean for 40 years. Yeah. And the thing is, is, you know, to say no, a lot of people say, hey, you know, I have to go to school. I have to start all over again. Yeah. To get my life, you know what I mean? I was once the number one contender in the world. I had the world accused the term by, you know what? Yeah. And the thing is that I made some crucial mistakes. Yeah. And then I had to start all over again. But I'm glad. And I thank God every day of my life that I got the opportunity yeah. to do it again, go back to school, start all over again. Yeah. And the same issues there and then realize that, hey, you know what? You you can't be like that. You have to, if you want something, there's other ways to approach it. That's and happening. the hard thing about it, and the thing about it, you're not going to get, to make it to the top, you got to go the old-fashioned way. You got to work for it. You can't. You, you're not gonna. It's not gonna be given to you. Yes. Next word. Oh, so um, my next word was boxing itself. When I say boxing, boxing itself, drama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, when I say Tony, tragic. I go again with the same uh, as, you know, I mean, uh, I love my brother. And, and sometimes 
I was going to the end, and the, the thing is that, you know what's scary? And I know you, Michael, and uh, Ben, it gets a part of your life that you, can't, you ask yourself, where am I going? Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? Especially if you deal with drug addiction, alcoholism, or whatever, yeah. or in life that, you know, what are you going to do with your life? You reach a point that every young man, you know, you hear about all these people, yeah. every young man could come to a point, especially a male, yeah. what are they going to do with their life? Yeah. You know, so, it's not that easy. You know what I mean? You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Absolutely. If you have boys, yeah. you know what I mean? What are you going to do with your life? You know what I mean? You know, you have to come. And sometimes you have, to, you know what I mean? Sometimes you have to, you have to swallow your pride. Yeah. Sometimes you have to, and that's one of the hardest things for a man to do. Okay, so, Mike, did you see this happening? Did you see this happening with Tony, like a gradual, this gradual descent? Because did you see him in the gym, like his skills were changing? Or I know he had gone to prison and then he'd come out. He came back. No, Tony had his skills. Tony always had his his skills and and, and that stuff. But when he came out the last time, he was already an older man. He was already he had to have his hair, and and uh, you know. The charm, the charisma, you know, it fades. Yeah. And yeah. they you don't know, like, and the thing is that, you know what I mean? Like in anything in life, you know, the reason I know that good because it happened to me. Sometimes when you think, I've been to places where they used to let you in. Yeah. You go into the door and they stop you. No, man, you're not allowed in here no more. Well, how come I, Crazy. you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You, you know what I mean? And you, and then you realize that, well, you know, you're drunk. You're, yeah. you're you're not dressed properly. Yeah. You know what I mean. Then you realize that hey, yeah. you know what? I like I said, you got to look at yourself and say, realize look, this is where I'm going. Then you change, and then people start noticing. People people are very forgiving. People, yeah. if they see you trying, they will give you a chance. Yes. They will give you an opportunity. Cause they, I was given the opportunity, mm -hmm. and I took it. And I think you know what I mean. The reasons why that you two are both happy successful people post boxing is because you were able to find a new life not necessarily a new identity but you were able to channel it into some other area where you you haven't and wound up with a gym bag full of broken dreams and regrets not that you both absolutely have elements of that because let's face it you both nearly got to the mountaintop in terms of you know the the pinnacle of professional boxing but you both appear to have just found a direction in life where you can give your energies to which which, which makes you happy well, here's what's confusing to me for a second, Ben. How do you fight Danny Little Red Lopez for 15 rounds and not win the world title? What happened there? Like, Do you know just... what he did the night before? The night... I, I guess he will anyway. Oh, yes, with the... Uh, with the uh, was okay, it, over uh... to Mike. Well, well, what happened is he... Like I tell you, and I'm not ashamed to say it, I was a drug addict. Yes. Uh, you see, I was overtrained and stuff, and you know, I mean, I'm not using it as an excuse, but I had an addiction. And what happened to deal, you know, I mean, to go going into a fight, I'm not gonna excuse I was beat up. I had a broken nose, I had a pool growing, I was beat up, I was overtrained. Yeah. But and to and see a lot of people think the pressures, everything was so intense. The first title fight in San Antonio fight. I mean, I I couldn't breathe. Mm -hmm. See, and I'm not using an excuse. Maybe it was a, a, a form of cowardice, but I I shot up the night before. You know what I mean? I to see. calm down, to realize the pressure was intense. Uh -huh. But I but but I uh, I was using it to 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 get my myself calm again to find myself yeah. you know what i mean to okay and that's what happened i won 15 rounds but i was already uh you know i was tired i was beat up i was you know, no no yeah and believe me to this day of my life i regret yes what i'd done mm -hmm. i could have been world champion i could have been an olympic and all the guys charles mooney i beat him silver medals in the olympics bernard taylor yeah you know what i mean all these guys but yet, you know what I mean? But the thing I'm happiest about, I got my life. Yes. And look, look what I'm doing now. I'm talking to two great people. Oh. and talking about boxing and, and I'm alive. You know what I mean? And thank God. Yeah. yeah. You know it what I mean? Is. And I feel bad for my brother, Tony. Yes. I feel bad for Aaron Pryor. 
Yeah. Yes. Oh, uh, 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 look at uh, 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 talking about um, uh, uh, from New Mexico. Tapia. Tapia. Yeah, Tapia. That, uh, Tapia. You know, I mean, I, I realized he had the real title coming back and then everything, but he couldn't break away from that, from, you know, from cocaine. Yeah, and, and heroin, yeah, yeah as well. Yeah, and, and addiction. I mean, you know, I'm lucky to get away. Like, like, so, but like, you have to understand. You got to be happy with yourself. Yes. You know what I mean? You got to be happy with yourself and realize, hey, you know what? And I'm glad I found it, and I'm glad you know I'm here with you guys. You know, um, I, I absolutely relate to what you're saying, and and it's and as a fighter, it's so it's so um. It's so disappointing. Like you, you fought for two title fights, Michael. Yeah, you fought, yeah. and you know how it is. It's, you know, you expect it, then, and the so, outcome doesn't work out for you. You know what you do sometimes, Mike, and yeah, and you don't even realize it, but you self sabotage. There's just yeah. ways that you do yourself. Exactly. Way. Yes, sir. Yeah, and 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 some of the things like um, things we're addicted to, whatever it is, it, it could be anything. It could be the most inane, small thing, but you do it. You live, and it's just it just kills your ability. And it kills right. you. It kills your your natural instincts. Your intellect is just. It's almost like you don't believe you're worth it. Like you, you. Uh, right. Oh yeah. Then sometimes you know it's self degrading. Yes. And uh, you, you know what I mean. And, and you know what I mean. And, and the best one you gotta learn. The most important for a fighter that he has to learn to love himself. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean. The, once you learn that, and then you know you you got you know you, you get out of it. You know, um, one thing somebody mentioned earlier, by the way, because I, I want to feel that we're engaging with our audience w w when we actually have one. And <laughs> somebody mentioned it's not particularly relevant to what we've been speaking about for the last several, you know, several minutes. But so you were talking about Mayweather never ventured outside of Las Vegas, didn't want to fight outside of Las Vegas. But it's just come up again. Here it is from Danny Graham. He said, "What about when Floyd fought Getty in Atlantic City and stopped him?" So he was he was basically picking us up about twenty minutes ago, saying. That yeah. Mayweather did fight outside of Las Vegas because he fought um, Getty in Atlantic City. I think the thing is, Mayweather in his earlier career fought in various different places in the United States. He fought in Michigan and, and, and all sorts. It mm -hmm. was by the time he'd established himself at welterweight that he didn't want to move out of Vegas. Yeah, and people were saying it. One of the reasons, amongst many, was that he did. He was allowed to inject Novocaine to his hands, I believe, or whatever it was. Oh, exactly. right. Okay. Something, something like that, which because he had problems with his hands. So, um. Yeah, the reason, I, I, generally they put like it was a cortisone shot in your knuckle, and that would yeah. kind of like dull in the. the well, back. in between the knuckles, that was you know I I, I got injected with the Palmasito Gomez fight, and the right hand they injected me, and and, and in between the knuckles, the Novocaine, yeah. and then you know it, it numbed it. Mm -hmm. It was well, I, they gave me Novocaine. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I got uh, cortisone. I, I know I got cortisone in mine. Oh, you had cortisone in your hand? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, just once, though. Yeah. Uh, so Floyd Mayweather was in London this weekend, actually. You know, he was at the York Hall, Bethnal Green. I don't know if you've heard of a venue. You probably have, Michael. But there's a venue in uh, Bethnal Green in the east end of London called the York Hall. And it's okay. kind of like our equivalent to the Blue Horizon or the Olympic mm -hmm. Auditorium. Yeah. It's kind of seminal, you know, spiritual home of British boxing, small, yeah. smallish <laughs> venue. And Floyd was there for a press conference for whatever he's doing. You know, he's doing these exhibitions and he's going up against some, I don't know if the guy's a YouTuber or... A, yeah, or an he editor, is, yes. Whatever he is. But, he, you know, it's, it's of minimal interest to me. But, yeah. but Floyd is able to make uh, obscene sums of money in his post-career. Mm -hmm. You know, now he's not competing. He's just on the kind of vaudeville circuit and he's still doing well at that. And I guess we should be... I guess we should be in favor of, of that. Yeah, the idea that yeah, he's able, absolutely. To, you know, if more fighters were able. Ricky Hatton, by the way, is getting ready for an exhibition against Marco Antonio Barrera. I think that's November twelfth. I think it's next weekend. Wow. And if you look at Ricky, it was postponed the first time because of for whatever reason. But yeah. he's absolutely buzzing, and he looks all thin and you know skinny again, yeah. and kind of defined cheekbones yeah. and glowing. <laughs> he's got that kind of glow that you get when you're training yeah. for a fight. Yeah, and I think it's a shame, isn't it, in a way that fighters can't keep going on for many years after they they've lost the cutting edge kind of form, you yeah. know, after they've retired, it's a shame yeah. that they can't stay busy in some kind of league like that, which keeps yeah. them fit and keeps them focused. You think? Yeah. Well, it's the nature of the beast because boxing, no matter what, especially if you have two fighters in there that, um, you know, they were once really capable. They're not anymore. They can go up probably against somebody who's not a competitive boxer, but to go up against competitive boxer, all of a sudden 
you're going to start thinking you're that guy again. And he's going to start thinking he's that guy again. And yeah. all of a sudden it's going to get too real. And, you know, you get injured. I mean, it's, we all know it, it's going into a fight healthy is hard enough. It's extremely yeah. difficult to box for train for two months and you're sparring every, pretty much every day. And you're doing exactly. at least six to eight rounds, at least six to eight rounds sparring and to not be injured going into a fight. It's just impossible. It's just on the yeah. possibility. It's terrible. You know, like, the other thing I don't like about this, I love boxing. Boxing has been all my life. And when they do things like this, then they make it into a carnival. You know what I mean? To a carnival, like, you know what I mean? And it takes away from the young fighters that are working hard to make it in the so sport. You know what are I mean? you talking about Hatton, Hatton versus Barrera exhibition and Floyd Mayweather versus... Whoever it is, some clown. I'm talking about Floyd Mayweather when he's fighting like the Jake Pauls and all those stuff, yeah. the guys that are not even fighters, the YouTubers. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. Now, if you're talking like the fighters, if the musicians like Frankie Valli and and, and uh, yeah, the Four Seasons and stuff, and the, they're bringing the old songs, that's fine. Barrera, uh, sure. Barrera against Ricky Haddon, they're going to be only the shell of themselves. So the world. We're not going to see... What, you know the you know the the, the classic, but it was you know when he uh, fought uh, uh what's uh All right. no no when he fought uh when he was one of his best the guy from England uh, Prince Mohammed uh Hamed oh yeah yeah, Prince, yeah, Prince, yeah. Prince, yeah. Uh, Nassim Ahmed yeah yeah exactly when he fought him Barrero was in you know was in his heyday you know what I mean or, or he was. Yeah. Was. Already losing the edge, but still, you know, he won the championship back in. He regained himself. But had okay, that's fine. You know, those are the classics. Had and stuff. I don't mind that. But when you get fighters fighting, uh, like I don't agree what Mayweather's doing. Fighting guys that you know what I mean. The, to preserve our sport, why may, would you cheapen it, make it a carnival? You know what I mean. I think Mayweather certainly does. I mean, I think. To, Two ex pros like Hatton and Barrera, while I have zero interest actually in the exhibition and, and could care less what happens or, or, or I don't suppose I will watch it, I just prefer to see Ricky Hatton looking inspired and, and yeah. fit. And yes, but those are the classics, him, exactly. With a massive it, beer gut on a beach for the looking like he wants to kill himself with a glass of champagne in his hand, you know. <laughs> but uh, that, that's what I think is positive. Mayweather, to be honest, I don't really have anything positive to say about exhibitions with guys like Logan Paul and as yeah. for that other idiot, the brother who a lot yeah. of people are starting to take seriously now you know, I, yeah. I do think that's injurious to the integrity of our sport, I absolutely believe that. But, I agree with you 100%. But I suppose ultimately Floyd is, it, he's obviously a huge success story and so far as he was able to um, secure his financial security and, and several generations in front of him's financial security if he so chooses, while minimizing the amount of harm and damage he took certainly it would appear at this stage we well, can I, I also think yeah that's that's absolutely true ben but and also like the thing is with mayweather he understands the kind of money he has he has to continue to make that kind of money otherwise he's going to be losing it if he's not making it you're losing it right that's the because trouble with being that rich right that's the, that's trouble, with that's being the trouble with being rich thinking. you can't all of a sudden say you're you know and, and your company can stop yeah. selling whatever it was selling when you're yeah, and still expect to see that that many billions in your bank account. It just doesn't happen that way. It, you it's complex, isn't you it? You pay taxes on it. I think money, when, when money gets colossal, I think it assumes a life of its own or several exactly. different lives. Exactly, yeah. And it can all go horribly wrong. And yep. You know you know what Rocky, Rocky Graziano said? The only good thing about being poor is it doesn't cost any money. <laughs> but it'll, cost something, it'll cost something else that's for sure <laughs> but um guys we're, we're about to hit the hour mark um oh, man. i would like to finish on some kind of crescendo i'm gonna i'm gonna entrust this one to you silk if you want to ask mike a final question which we will use as a wrap for this what i feel as a wrap wow i guess i mean i did i already asked you if you fine. had the opportunity to do yeah. it all over again what it was you would do did I did I not already ask that? I might demand. Yeah, you did. Yes, exactly. Yes. yes, and I said no. The word said no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so on that note, no, really. Um, oh, let me see. Uh, I have so many. What's the cutest card girl you ever saw? I'm gonna be honest with you. Okay, now hold on. I'm gonna be honest. It's right. I'll be honest with you. 
when you focus in a fight and the yeah. guy, you know, the other guy, you don't worry. You, you don't worry about the card girls. That was I my mean, problem. That was that's my you problem. Went wrong. That's why you went wrong, Silk. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't worry about the card. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I was a lot of card girls, but that wasn't in my mind. I was yeah. worried about the guys who going to go now. I was okay. concentrating on the fight. On the fight, I didn't worry about the card. Vince, that's the promotion. I'm Vince, doing. I'm the performer. I'm gonna perform. Okay, <laughs> brilliant. So, since you want to finish this on a kind of um, light-hearted kind of female, a card kind of girl, heavy note, Silk. I'll, I'll ask you a question, <laughs> ready? I'll ask you a question: Cl Clarissa Shields or Alicia Baumgartner? Well, um, Alicia Baumgartner was the girl who just fought, right? Yes, Clarissa. Against um, I go with Clarissa. You think she's cute, though, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she's, I think she's cuter. I think, yeah, yeah. Do, yeah. You, do you have an opinion on this one, Mike? Before we call this one a wrap, I, I don't know. Is this legal? I, I don't. What do you mean? I'm uh, oh, yeah, staying yeah. neutral. I go neutral. I, I'm a... Okay, listen, listen, champ. I, when I say champ, I'm talking to him. By the way, you told me not to call you champ. I call Mike I champ. It, okay. I call a lot of. I no. call a lot fighters who I look up to, champ. But my, Michael Elijah Day says I can't call him champ because he never quite made it. So, so Silk and champ, Michael Ala, it was an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Um, guys, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please get on board with Ace Podcast Nation. Check, subscribe to the channel. You can become a member via Patreon. You will enable them to make more content like this. We're going to keep going with this. We will take over the world at some point. You know, leave it with us. Um, Guys, thanks for showing up. Silk, as always. Mike, always Thank a pleasure. You, Mike, hey, Thank I, you for having me on. Thank you, you for having me on. I can't tell you how honored I am to speak with you, brother. It's been, I've, you know, obviously I've seen your your work. I've known of you so much. I was so excited when Ben told me he, he was going to have you on, on with us. So I'm so honored and I look forward to shaking your hand one day, brother. I hope Same you guys here, sir. Thank you. I, I appreciate that very much, uh, Michael. You're a great yeah, Great friend, a thank you. A hero, thank you. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed doing it. Yeah, I did. This is amazing. Awesome. Okay, good.